decade of neglect our education system has experienced. Question number 11, Matt Ducey. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health and asks, what, why did he say of the final report from the government's six and a half million dollar mental health inquiry that, quote, I guess doesn't contain too many surprises, end quote? Mr Speaker. The Honourable Dr David Clark. I think all members of this House will have heard stories from people with lived experience of mental health and addiction issues and will know that we face huge challenges in this area. That is no surprise. It is one thing to know we need to change, and it's another thing to know what that change will look like. The inquiry panel heard from thousands of New Zealanders and has produced a considered report containing 40 recommendations. It is already shaping and will shape our response to mental health and addiction for years to come. Supplementary. What does he say to Sean Robinson, Chief Executive of the Mental Health Foundation, who said, the government has been waiting for the inquiry, and the inquiry has instructed them to stop delaying and get going. There is no further justification for delay. Mr Speaker, um, this government has not had any delay. We invested $200 million into the mental health and addiction ring fence for DHBs in our first budget. We launched the mental health and addiction inquiry in our first 100 days. We've introduced the Mana RK program in Kaikoura and Canterbury to get mental health workers on the ground in primary schools and in intermediate schools. We've introduced nurses in schools for DSOL 4, which we're rolling out across New Zealand. And on Saturday, we introduced community service card discounts uh, that will be on average $20 to $30 uh, per person across the country for over 500,000 New Zealanders, which is the way into mental health services through primary care uh, for most people, and we think that that will make it more accessible. And on top of that, uh, we will be making announcements shortly around the talking therapies uh, pilot announced in the budget uh, for 18 to 25-year-olds, uh, an initiative sparked by um, recommendations from the Green Party of Aotearoa New Zealand. We are getting on with a number That's of things right. in the meantime because the evidence is there, and we will continue to get on with it. We will respond urgently order, and order, carefully order. That's to That's enough. This. Thank you. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Can he commit, with almost $3 billion prioritised for a failed tertiary free fees policy, that his government will ensure there is enough funding to adequately respond to what the public expects from the mental health inquiry? I'm, I'm going to give the member one more chance to get that question in order. Can he commit that there is enough funding to adequately respond to what the public expects from the findings of the mental health inquiry? Mr Speaker, this government has been really clear already that one of the key priorities in the upcoming budget is mental health and wellbeing. Yeah, yeah. This government is committed to responding meaningfully and significantly to this report. However, I will note that many of the issues that we are facing have built up over years. Workforce issues, senior nurses uh, around the country are in short supply. We have inherited underfunding in our health system, which will make response challenging. We're committed to dealing with the issues we've inherited, but I think the member will understand that his government has set us in a difficult starting place. Given the Mental Health Inquiry report recommended, uh, recommending establishing a cross-party group in Parliament, will he accept my invitation to join a cross-party group on mental health, which he previously rejected? Uh, Mr Speaker, um, I uh, will note that uh, Mike Houlihan had a, an excellent piece in the Otago Daily Times today about the concern about the, this inquiry being turned into a political football. I share his concerns. But I do look forward, Mr Speaker, to all parties in this House playing a constructive role as we respond to this inquiry. In the first instance, the Health Select Committee is the most appropriate vehicle for cross-party discussions, and I understand the committee will receive a briefing on this very report later this month. Right. Question number 12, the Right Honourable David Carter. Ah, thank you, Mr Speaker.